Welcome to part 4 of Let's Play Free Wave Fighter by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 223. Okay, let's reread this as a reminder. Uh, you jack the car up and put on the spare wheel. A few minutes later, you are driving east again, carefully trying to avoid sharp stones. Uh, you drive for an hour across the bumpy terrain uh, until you finally reach another road running north to south. Uh, you turn right onto it, grateful to be driving on a smooth road again. Uh, you pass an articulated truck which looks as if it has only recently, be recently been parked. If you wish to stop and examine the truck, turn to 104. If you'd rather, if you'd rather drive on without stopping, turn to 118. Okay, I do want to examine the truck, so turn to 104. Uh, there is nothing of use inside the cabin and its wagon is empty. You automatically tap the petrol tank to see if there is any fuel left in it and are surprised to discover that there is. Um, wouldn't it run on diesel though? Um, because it's it's a lorry or something, I don't know. Don't they run on diesel? Which isn't compatible with a petrol engine. I don't know, I'm not an expert on cars or anything, but that's, uh, that's pretty much all I know. Anyway, um... Anyway, and are, and are surprised to discover that there is. The tank is made of reinforced steel and you wonder how you can extract the petrol. If you have a length of plastic tubing, turn to 306. If you do not have any plastic tubing, turn to 187. Let's have a look. What do we have? We have um, coiled plastic tubing. Well, that's a length of plastic tubing, isn't it? So let's turn to 306. Uh, you place an empty petrol canister under the trunk under the truck's petrol tank and connect them with the plastic tubing. Uh, you suck the tube to start the petrol flowing. Uh, you siphon out all of the tank's petrol, nearly filling your canister. Add one luck point. You place the fuel inside the interceptor and continue the drive south. Turn to 118. Okay, so one luck point extra, so that puts us back to 11. And we have another canister of petrol. I'll just say fuel canister. There we go. And let's start a new line. There we go. Um, yeah, so drive south to 118. Here we go. Uh, you travel about... 50 miles, there we go, did it in my head automatically, uh, and then the road ends at a T-junction. You decide to turn left in the direction of San Anglo, and I'm reading the wrong, uh, the wrong paragraph. The miles slip by, <laughs> yeah, it's 118, I should be reading, I, I don't have my glasses on. Uh, the miles slip by and your petrol gauge once again reads almost empty. If you have filled your petrol canister recently, turn to 99. If you do not have any fuel left, turn to 364. Okay, we have filled it recently, so let's turn to 99. You stop the car and empty the fuel canister into the petrol tank. You see that the interceptor is looking somewhat the worse for wear and wonder if it will last the trip. Um, let me just say I've used the fuel canister. So that's empty. There we go. Anyway, um, if you wish to carry out some instant repairs, turn to 21. If you'd rather drive off immediately, turn to 221. Um, we are going to carry out some instant repairs and turn to 21. Uh, you do what you can to repair the car. It takes you about half an hour to clean the spark plugs, check the oil, tune the carburetor. Still don't know what that is. Uh, I've heard that word so many times on films and stuff and read it in books, but I have no idea what a carburetor is. Is it something related to carbon, except it retters it? I don't know. Um, and make sure that nothing vital is damaged. You find that three wheel nuts are loose on one of the back tyres and screw them up tight again. Uh, add two armour points. Is, should that be tightly? Yeah, I'll say screw them up tightly again. Uh, add two armour points. Satisfied that everything is as well as can be expected, you set off south again, turn to 221. Okay, so that's two more armour points. That puts us up to 29. That's good, isn't it? Although how 
screwing some nuts gives us more armor? I don't know. Okay, 221. Hubba, hubba. Whoa, mama. Mm mm. And other cliches. Uh, she looks like like one of those sort of. Uh, it's difficult to explain. One of those sort of uh, um, mid thirties sort of mothers in sort of like one of those eighties American sitcoms. I, I just can't put my finger on it. It's like a sort of. She, uh, she looks like you know she'd be you know one uh, the mother in a family sitcom. But I can't put my put my finger on it. Um, but hubba hubba nonetheless. Anyway, 221. The road cuts a straight black line through the nightmare red uh, landscape. The desert heat rises from the sand in shimmering waves and your air conditioner rattles in its noisy struggle to keep you cool. Now, well, that wastes, uh, uh, that wastes fuel, doesn't it? Or so I've been told. Um, your radio picks up nothing but static and crackles away monotonously. You keep the accelerator pressed to the floor as you speed through the badlands. Ahead in the... Ahead, in the distance, you see black smoke curling up into the air. You slow down and brake alongside a burning car. It's an old sports car from the last century, a Corvette with its 200 brake horsepower V8 engine. <gasps> horsepower, that's not a metric unit. Um, you know, we need to do uh, watts, that's the, uh, the metric unit for power. We need to, you know, one horsepower, I think, is something like, what is it? 200 foot pounds per second or something like that. 160 foot pounds per second or something like that. Uh, I, I, I don't know the exact number, which is strange, I know, but uh, I always forget it. It's something like that. It's definitely something foot pounds per second. Um, right now I have to look it up. Uh, I'll be right back. And I'm back. Okay, so one horsepower is almost right about the foot pounds per second, but it's not 200, it's 550 foot pounds per second. Um, yeah, so one horsepower can lift 550 pounds one foot high in one second, because uh, power is um, power is velocity times uh, force times velocity. That's right. Yeah, so 550 pounds. The pa a pound is strictly speaking a measure of force because it's weight, which is force. A metric version of that is a newton. So 550 pounds, um, one foot high in a second. So the unit of velocity there is feet per second. So it's 550 pounds per foot per second, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, oh, no, 550, 550 pounds in one foot per second or whatever it is, which is roughly 745.7 watts. That's the imperial... Uh, horsepower and the metric horsepower, which is a bit of an oxymoron, is uh, 735.5 watts. Um, and watts are definitely newtons times meters per second, so that's force times velocity. Is the is the watt? Yeah. Uh, just uh, bear with me a moment. Yeah, so 550 uh, foot pounds per second. Just a sec, sorry. I'll just pause the video. Uh, yes, yeah, so a power does equal force times velocity. I was just confirming that. Okay, anyway, so that's interesting, wasn't it? So one horsepower is 550 foot-pounds per second. Okay, where was I? I uh, can't remember now. Um, oh, yeah, here we go. It's an old sports car from the last century. A Corvette with its 200 brake horsepower V8 engine. A beast of the past abruptly ending its life in a ball of fire. Uh, leaning casually against a boulder away from the burning wreck is a blonde woman wearing black overalls and holding a shotgun. 
Um, when she sees the interceptor approach, she runs out into the road to wave you down. You stop in front of her, your hand reaching for your revolver in case she tries to hijack the interceptor. You ask her where she is going, and in a stern voice, she replies, "South, as far as you are uh, south, as far as you are concerned. I just want a lift, unless you also belong to that wild gang of road warriors who attacked me." You tell her that you are on a mission to San Anglo and offer her a ride. San Anglo, she yells. You must be the person we have been expecting from New Hope. I'm glad she's nice. Uh, one at the moment. Uh, she jumps in the car and introduces herself as Amber. She says that a message went out to all petrol ve oh, petrol uh, to all patrol vehicles to be on the lookout for the interceptor, but she had to be sure that you were who you said you were. She also tells you that there is a complication. For the last two days, San Anglo. There she is again. For the last two days, San Anglo has been under constant attack from a large gang of road warriors known as the Doom Dogs, led by a man they call the Animal. It was the Doom Dogs who attacked her less than an hour ago. They are determined to massacre the inhabitants of San Anglo to have access to the reserves of petrol. It is now virtually impossible to leave or enter San Anglo without being attacked by their heavily armed cars and motorbikes. There is only one solution, to break into their camp at night and sabotage their vehicles. The look of determination in Amber's eyes convinces you that there is no alternative and you agree to help her. Uh, she slaps the dashboard in eager excitement and tells you to drive south as quickly as possible. Half an hour later, Amber tells you to stop. In the distance, you, you can see smoke rising into the air. San Anglo Refinery, she says in a proud voice. We'd rather die than let the vermin steal the petrol from us. Turn left off the road. It will be dark in an hour, and then we'll have to leave the car and walk to the Doom Dogs camp. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to seven. If you are unlucky, turn to 331. Okay, so our luck is currently uh, 11, so that's pretty good. So we have one out of 36 chance of being unlucky here. So we need to get um, a double dice roll of um, 11 or lower. That was close, I tell you. That, that was close. Okay, anyway, so we were lucky, just, and that means we put our luck down to 10. And, uh, yeah, that means we go to uh, we go to 7, because we were lucky. Um, Amber urges you to turn off the road and head east across the stony desert ground. She lets you drive on until the interceptor cannot be seen from the road. Then she tells you to stop and wait until it gets dark. Uh, we need to be alert for our raid tonight, so I brought along something to keep us going, she says happily, reaching into her pocket. Test your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 319. If you are unlucky, turn to 136. Okay, let's do this again, except now uh, my luck is now 10, so this is going to be slightly more difficult. Okay, so we need this to be 10 or lower. And we were lucky again, good. But of course we have to put our luck down to 9 now. Okay, um... Yep, yeah, we were lucky, so turned to 319. I think it's Amber. I think she's a very lucky girl, or woman, or um, 80s sitcom housewife, mother, whatever she is. Amber, han Amber hands you some glucose tablets and energy synthy pills. Add four stamina points, turn to 32. Okay, that puts us up to 33 then. Uh, yep, yeah, turn to 32. You pack all your equipment into two backpacks and set off towards the Doom Dogs camp. There is a full moon and it is not too difficult to make your way across the desert. Guided by your compass, you head steadily east. After an hour, you see the glow of a fire in the distance on high ground. Amber explains in a whisper that the Doom Dogs live in tents on top of a low, flat hill where their cars are parked. When you reach the hill, you find that the slope is very gentle and you are soon at the top. You lie down and survey the movements inside the camp. A group of people are sitting around the campfire, drinking and laughing. Two men are walking slowly around the edge of the camp on guard duty, each armed with a rifle. You decide to crawl round the side of the hill to the barbed wire fence to put your plan into action. You hear one of the guards above you close by and press yourself against the side of the hill to avoid being seen. Um, Amber inadvertently kicks a stone which rolls down the hill a few yards. 
The sound it makes is very loud in the quiet of the desert night. Test your luck. If you're lucky, turn to 76. If you're unlucky, turn to 160. Okay, great. Another, uh, another luck test. Okay, now we have to get nine or less. Oh, yes, we're still lucky. Good. It's best just to go for it, really, not to dawdle, as it were. Okay, that puts us down to eight luck, though. Anyway, we were lucky, so turn to 76. The guard does not pay any te any attention to the noise of the rolling stone, being distracted by the jokes that his friends are telling around the fire. He walks on by, and you are able to crawl up to the fence. Turn to 198. You reach the barbed wire fence and see eight vehicles inside its perimeter. The coiled wire is too finely meshed for you to be able to squeeze through without becoming entangled. If you possess a pair of wire cutters, turn to 85. If you do not, turn to 255. Let's have a look. Oh, yep, there they are, wire cutters. Good. <coughs> um, yep, turn to 85. Off we go. Uh, you quickly snip through the wire and crawl into the compound. Amber moves from vehicle to vehicle, attaching small limpet mines to their engine blocks. When she has finished activating them, she signals for you to leave. You crawl down the side of the hill and stand up to run when you feel you are out of sight. The explosions suddenly start and you count seven in all. One of the mines must have had a faulty fuse, Amber says in a breathless voice as you run back towards the interceptor. You hear an engine start and look behind you to see two beams of light moving away from the rising flames of the burning wrecks. The doom dogs intend to hunt down their attackers. If your current stamina is 10 or greater, turn to 107. If your current stamina is less than 10, turn to 326. Okay. Um, yep, it is greater than uh, than 10, isn't it, because it's at maximum. So let's turn to 107. Oh yeah, we've done that one. Um, I think I have, anyway. Uh, you run like the wind, glancing several times over your shoulder to watch the vehicle circling the hill, trying to pick up your tracks. You are less than 200 yards from the interceptor when your tracks are spotted and the vehicle turns to give chase. An angry voice booms out over the desert through a loudspeaker, shouting, Stop! There is no escape from the animal. The message is repeated over and over again as the vehicle closes up on, closes up on you. Closes up on you, whatever. The welcome sight of the interceptor appears before you, and you both jump inside just as your pursuers come into view. Turn to 158. Oh, there we are. You start up the interceptor and turn to face your attackers. Your headlights illuminate a customised station wagon which has thick sheets of plate steel riveted to its body and a pointed ramming bar protruding from its front grille. Machine guns nozzle... Machine, machine gun nozzles housed on either side of the ram bar suddenly open fire. Station wagon, firepower 10, armor 19. You are too close to the station wagon to be able to launch a rocket, even if you have one left, and must return fire with your own machine guns. If you survive three attack rounds of vehicle combat, turn to 67. Okay, um... I'm really sorry, but I can't remember how to do vehicle combat again. Um... What was the um, weapons that I have? Can't remember. Okay, let me just go back. Right, what paragraph are we on? One five eight. Let me just go back and see how vehicle combo works. Because I remember I had a a better weapon or something. I don't want to muck this up. No. Anyway, vehicle combat. Yep. Firepower score of your opponents. Yep. So fi so him firepower, me fire firepower, and then proceed to step six. Step six is armor score. S successful hit because damage. Roll one die and deduct this number from the vehicle's armor score. Okay, and then do it again. Okay. So all right. So well, what weapon do I have? I can't remember. Do I have weapons? I've I've haven't done this for a while. Have I? You know what, I think I'm talking about the previous book, aren't I, or something? Because I don't think I have... 
Yeah, because I was talking about the special weapon and stuff from the previous book, Starship Traveller, whatever it's called. Um, what was it called? The Space Assassin, sorry. Yeah, I'm talking about that. I always have machine guns in this. I'm being stupid. If I haven't done this for two weeks, I, I've forgotten what is... Yeah, I've forgotten what's going on. Yeah, so this is just sort of... Yeah, so fi him firepower, me firepower, then it's just roll one, die, then subtract that from the total or whatever, isn't it? Anyway, 10 and 19 is what we're dealing with. So, well, um, what is he? He is a station wagon. Um, hyphenated, so let's hyphenate it here. Station hyphen wagon. Uh, skill 10. Stamina 19. Okay, let's do this. So my f skill is 9, and my firepower is... Um, oh no, excuse me, my firepower is 11, and my armour is... Actually, am I doing skill? Is it skill? No, it's firepower, so... Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. So they want firepower, don't we? Yeah, got to change this. Right. Anyway, my firepower is 11, and my stamina is, um... It's armour, isn't it? It's like... It takes it off armour, doesn't it? Because it's... Yeah, I didn't change this one to armour, so I'll change one to armour, just so there's no confusion. But this should be... The stamina should be armour, because this is vehicle combat. Anyway, so I have to survive 3, so his firepower is 10. Right, let's just do this. So, roll 2 dice for him. So that's 10, plus that's 19. Mine's 11. 13, so 19 to 13. Right, 19 to 13. Right, that means I roll a die for him, one die to determine what he's taken off. Right, that's four, so that's taken four off my armour, I, I presume. Yeah, step six is roll one die and deduct this number from the vehicles, yeah. Okay, yeah, so let's go back. Sorry, I have to remind myself how to do this because it's different. It's not like sword and sorcery. Oh, that's nasty, isn't it? forgot to show that picture. There we go. So that's what we're facing. That's the station wagon. Um, anyway, so that was four. So I need to take four off my armour. Um, yep, so that's 25 now. Whoops, not M. There we go. Right, let's do that again. Um, so, yeah, roll for him. So that's 10 plus... 7, that's 17, I get 11 plus 10, which is 21. 17 to 21. That means I win that, and that puts him down to... Oh yeah, I haven't done it yet, have I? Right, roll one die for this. 5, that's quite good. Um, that puts him down to 14. Right, that's two attack rounds I've survived. This is the last one, I, I presume. Because I can't really kill him, because that would be... He would have a minimum, and a maximum damage I can do is 18, um, because that would uh, put him down to 1, because it's 3 times 6, so I can't kill him anyway. Um, right, him again, so him first, that's 20, I get 13, great. So 20 to 13, doesn't really matter, I just have to survive them. 20 to 13, and that puts, well, and then the damage is 6, fantastic. Uh, get rid of the buzzing. So that's six damage, so that will put me down to nineteen armor, won't it? There we go. Okay, so that's three attack rounds survived. Um so let's turn to sixty seven. Like two jousting knights on horseback, the two vehicles sweep by each other with machine guns blazing. After each pass, you turn sharply and charge at each other again. But suddenly the station wagon swerves to ram the interceptor. You turn the steering wheel to take the interceptor out of the path of the station wagon. Roll two dice. If the total is the same as or less than your skill, turn to 200. If the total is greater than your skill, turn to 248. Okay, now this is quite nasty because if we fail this, um, we are dead. So um, our skill is currently 9, so we need this dice roll to be 9 or less. If it's not, we're dead. And we're not dead. <laughs> I'll just do it again, but you know, you know how it is. You know, so we've got 3, so that's good. So turn to 200.
Uh, yeah, here we are. Just seeing what that picture was. Uh, you managed to avoid a head-on collision, but are rammed in the side by the station wagon. Its pointed ram bar pierces the interceptor's reinforced panel, locking the two vehicles together. The station wagon's loudspeaker immediately barks out a message from the animal. Fight him hand-to-hand -hand or shoot it out. If you wish to fight the animal, turn to 269. If you wish to shoot it out, turn to 102. Okay, we are going to shoot it out. So turn to 102. We're not fighting an animal. Some nutter. You signal to Amber to open her door and begin firing at the doom dogs. Your own door is sprayed with bullets as you open it just when um, when your four opponents begin their, their, their barrage of fire. Behind the cover of the vehicles, everybody is well protected. You aim your fire at two of the Doom Dogs while Amber shoots at the other two. First Doom Dog. Um, second Doom Dog, okay. During this shooting combat, both Doom Dogs will fire separately at you during each attack round, but you must choose which of the two you will fire at. Uh, against the other, you throw for your attack strength in a normal way, but will not wound him if your attack strength is greater. You must just count this as though you dodged his bullet. Of course, if his attack strength is greater, his bullet will wound you. If you win, turn to 154, but reduce your skill by one point if you are shot more than once during the shootout. Now, before I do that, I just need to check this again. So, Shooting, how much damage does a bullet do? Uh, yeah, unlimited, yep. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Um, yep. Roll one die, oh, so roll one, it's roll one die again, okay. So, it's roll one die. Yeah, so it could do loads of damage, so we're on 102, weren't we? So, we have to fight them both at the same time, effectively, and we have to dodge both bullets, it's like fighting both at the same time. Anyway, Doom Dog. Um right, what's he called? I forget already. First Doom Dog, second Doom Dog, seven thirteen, okay. First Doom Dog. Oops. Doom Dog. Skill seven. Stamina fourteen. Second Doom Dog. Uh what was he? Eight no seven thirteen, eight fourteen, right. Eight fourteen, okay. Okay, dokie. Okay. Right, so we're shooting for him uh, skill for him first. So my skill is uh nine like it was before. There his skill is seven. Let's do him first, the seven one. Um let's go. So we're doing it for him first, off we go. So seven plus eight is fifteen, so fifteen to sixteen, so I win. So that's fifteen to sixteen. Uh then I have to yeah, then I have to uh, determine. Oh, whoops! I shouldn't have done that right. To 16. Okay, now um, then I roll one die to determine how much damage I do. Five. That's quite good. Okay, good. Uh, that puts him down to eight. Because it's a bullet. Right now I have to do for him. But if I win, I just don't receive. I just don't receive any damage. That's the only thing. So him is eight. So this is eight plus. 7, that's 15, I get 13, so 15 to 13, that means he wins and he's going to do some damage on me, so he's going to do 5 damage, so that's 5 off my stamina, so that puts me down to 28, that's not good is it? Ok, now let's do it again, um, right, so 7 plus... 8 is 15, I get 16, so 15 to 16 again, that's exactly what it was last time, deja vu, right, 15 to 16, and then let's find out how much damage it does, 2, that's not as good, but oh well, so that's 6, put some down to 6, All right, now we do for the other Doom Dog, um, yep, so this is 8 plus 10, 18, great, I get... 17. 18 to 17, so he wins. He's going to do some damage on me, like before. So, down to 1. 6 damage, great. So that puts me down to 22. 
That was quite a nasty one, not 33, 22. Uh, right, let's go again. Um, okay, 7 plus 6 is 13. That's 13 to 14. So 13 to 14. That means I win again. And my damage is... Please be a 6. Yes, I did get a 6. Good, that means he's dead. Good. So that's 0 for him. He's dead. And, okay, now we're just deflecting his one or whatever. So this is 8 plus 12, 20. Great. And I get 16. 20 to 16. All right, 20 to 16. That means he's 1. That means I have to determine his damage. Okay, he's going to do 6 damage again. Great. Okay, so that puts me down to 16 stamina. But now I just fight him as normal. Okay, so... Um, so 8 plus 5 is 13, I get 18, uh, no, sorry, 16, 13 to 16. That means I win, and I do some damage, so what is it? It is 6 again, I get lots of 6s, very strange. Um, that puts them down to 8, not that I'm complaining about that 6. Okay, 8 plus ten, uh, 18, I get 14. So 14, 18 to 14. That means he hurts me again. Um, he is going to yeah, do some damage, and his damage is 5. That puts me down to 11 stamina. I have to use some of those medical kits or whatever later on. Um, okay, 8 plus 4 is 12. I get... 13, so 12 to 13, I win, just. How much damage do I do? Um, 5, that's not bad. That puts him down to 3, so hopefully just one more, and then we're done. Um, okay, 8 plus 7 is 15, I get 18. So 15 to 18, this could be it. And what's the damage? Uh, the damage is... Need it three or more? Yes, good. That means he's definitely dead. Okay, so zero. Good, that's the end of that. That's the end of the Doom Dogs. Um, I'm just going to check, actually, how much thing does a... How much stuff does a... Um, I'm on 102. So how much does a med kit do, whatever? Four stamina points. Okay, so 102. I'll go back to 102. Um, right, let's use some of those med kits. I have uh, seven left, so let's use two of them, go down to five, and that will put me up to 19 stamina. That's more respectable, isn't it? Okay, so um, if you win, turn to 154, but reduce your skill, yeah. So my skill is taken down by one because I was hit more than once because of bullets and stuff. So, um,. Yeah, so I was hit at least twice, wasn't I? Um, yeah, so 154. Let's go to go to that. Amber silences her two opponents, but you do not realise that you were being watched during your fight with the Doom Dogs. A fifth person remained inside the station wagon. Uh, uh, the animal. On seeing the last of his gang fall to the ground, he leaps out of the station wagon and runs at you unarmed, snorting like an angry bull. He is a terrifying sight in the moonlight. Huge and bare-chested, he wears a tight-fitting black face mask, knee-high boots with steel toe caps, and his clenched fists are wrapped in studded leather. Before you have time to react, he wraps his arms around you in a bear hug and starts to squeeze. Lose two stamina points. Okay, so that takes me down to 17. There we go. Okay, um, Amber dare, dare not risk. I always think that dare should, if you're going to use it as a modal verb or auxiliary verb like that, it should, and you're not taking the infinitive, it should just be dare. Like It's either Amber dare not or Amber dares not to risk. 
So uh, it was, you know, I, I think if it's dare without the in, without two, I think it should just be dare. So Amber dare not to risk shooting in case she hits you. But uh, you know, the, the jury's out on that one. In my opinion, it should be dare not at risk shooting. It's like saying wouldn't dare. It, it should really be wouldn't dare to do it because you can't really combine. If you have two of those verbs, you have to take the infinitive. Um, so it should should be wouldn't dare to do it, not wouldn't dare do it because it needs the two, so it wouldn't dare to do it, but it should be dare not risk, not dares not, because that implies it is going to take the infinitive, so dares not to risk. So I think it should be um, Amber dare not risk shooting in case she hits you, uh, and she looks around frantically for a hand weapon. She grabs a spanner from the back of the car and runs to your aid. Roll one die. If you roll one or two, turn to 245. If you roll between three and six, turn to, th turn to 376. Okay, um, I'm going to do this in the next part because I've gone over half an hour. So I'll just write down we're on 154. So the next paragraph is 154. Um, yep, yeah, and in the next part, I'll probably complete the game in the next part. I might have said that in the last video, but there's really not much more to do. And there's 154, and we'll decide, well, not decide, but we'll roll the die. In, at the beginning of the next part. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and my discussions of horsepower and uh, verbs. And I hope you can join me next time. Goodbye.